Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Today you're going to meet Julian, a young man with two German Shepherd puppies and some very good insights. Then we meet a certified psychotherapist that has a dog that helps open up communications with her patients. The pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, takes us to meet some adorable pigs at AB Ranch in Santa Paula. And then we find some cuddly cats at the Santa Barbara Humane Society that are ready to find their perfect forever homes. So let's tiptoe together as we go into the Animal Zone. Bonjour Alex. Bonjour Renaud. Happiness, it's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renaud's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we provide low-cost spay and neuter services and vaccinations. It's important for your dogs and cats to get vaccinated to prevent illnesses. And spay and neuter surgeries help prevent unwanted pregnancies and can benefit the health of your pet. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not chop. Well, we're here today with Julian and his two newly adopted pets. And Julian, what are their names? Flame and Fire. What? what they're kind of like German Shepherd, uh, what, Doberman mix? Sh German Shepherd Doberman mixes. Yeah, they're really cute. How old are they, do you think? Um, I think my dad told me they're three months old. Boy, so you're going to have a busy house now with these two guys, right? Yep. And tell me, what do you think is important if you're going to adopt a dog. What are some of the important things you think about? Compassion, care, and some free slippers for them to chew on. <laughs> are they eating your slippers up? They are, huh? A lot of work. You, you take them out and exercise a lot with them? Yep. And they probably play a lot too, right? Yeah, I run with them and at our house we take them off leash and, I, and they just chase me. It's really fun. It is fun, yeah. huh? How about treats? Do you give them treats at all? Sometimes if but if they be naughty, I put them back in their cage. Wow, so you're a disciplinarian, huh? Yeah, but I just put them back into their cage until they calm down for a while. Now, you've, you've grown up with, with dogs ever since you were a baby, right? And cats, too. Yeah. What do you like better, dogs or cats? That's not optional for me. <laughs> you like them both, huh? That's a good one. You're, you could be a good politician in the future. Yep. Um, how many dogs do you have now? Well, I am in one's house and these two monkeys at my dad's house, so if you count them all, six. That's a pretty good handful. Yep. Yep. And do you like one over the other? Is there a favorite amongst them all? No. Do you love them all equally? No. What a good son you are. Gee whiz, you're going to be a great pop, pop to these little guys. Um, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be animal control and 
and also a firefighter. Wow, maybe you could work with Dalmatians. Because don't they, aren't they the ones that most firefighters use? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is so great, Julian. Is there anything you want to tell the folks out there as far as uh, if they're thinking about adopting an animal, what they should think about and uh, what they should do? Yes. If, you, if you're going to adopt a dog, you're going to need a parking lot that says reserve parking for pet lovers, and you're going to need a, a sign that says pets are allowed, compassion and care. Pretty great. Julian, thank you so much for coming on Animal You're Zone. Welcome. We appreciate it. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after these words. My name is Samantha Martin with the amazing AcroCats, and you are watching Animal Zone. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them! Well, today on Animal Zone, we're with Larissa Wall, my favorite pet rescue expert from the Hallmark Channel. You know, all this animal adoption is kind of driving me crazy. Yeah, it's got me going a little bonkers, too. Maybe it's time for, what do you think, some therapy? All right, I say so. Let's do it. There's a therapist in here. Let's check <laughs> it out. Look at that. <laughs> and here we are with Dr. Jennifer Cassatley, who is a clinical psychologist and her clinical dog, Digby. <laughs> Love yeah. Digby. Digby, can, can you help me get over my adoption anxiety here? I bet he can. Yeah. I, I mean, so. how did you first discover that Digby was a, a, a dog that could help out in therapy? Well, actually, it was shortly after I got her, and I realized that she is just very calm and gentle and had an affinity for children and I'd been doing some readings about animals in therapy and the benefits. So I tried on a kind of a case-by-case -case basis and she just did really well. And so she's full-time now. How, how does it work? I mean, if I came in with a lot of stress, I got a lot of stress. Um, <laughs> is it just the physical contact that makes a difference or is there something else? I think it's the energy. She changes the tone of the room. She even changes the tone in this office in that, uh, we interact more with each other. Mm -hmm. So um, I think as you, you know, as you, when you saw when you came in that she likes to greet in the waiting room and she has her ball and she jumps up and down and she goes right to you when she knows who she's greeting and then races down the hallway and waits for you to come in. And so it's, it's really, it's hard not to feel warm and welcome and be smiling uh, with children. Um, some of that initial resistance uh, it just isn't there. They're racing down the hall to catch up with her. And she's probably breaking a rule. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, with kids specifically, there must be kind of a, a, a buffer that she offers. Kind of instead of a kid sitting talking to you necessarily, they may, might be nervous, but they've kind of got this little friend to bring it out of them a little more. Definitely. Um, a lot of, in, at least initially when kids come in, they don't know what to expect in a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And so when they see a dog and they see that we sit on the floor, you know, it just takes some of the anxiety away. Also, what it does is it allows for um, for kids to, it, it takes some of the pressure off them when they come in because they're sort of in the hot speed seat and they're gonna be asked a lot of questions as to you know, why they're here, things that they don't wanna talk about, things that are difficult or embarrassing. And so by having a dog and being able to pet her, <laughs> it takes, it shifts that intensity from them 
to a shared, a shared activity and it gives them a sense of control where they can ask questions and learn a little bit about this environment. Um, about me, about the dog, what they can expect, that it is more of a conversation mm -hmm. than a lecture. Now therapy dogs are something that you hear they're in hospitals and other institutions. Yes. How does that work and how does it help? You know, I think dogs that go into hospitals tend to be more have more specialized training. Uh, they need to be calm and not afraid of the equipment, um, you know, of a certain disposition where they obey many commands. Uh, service dogs tend to be more highly qualified even in terms of for individuals who have uh, medical or mental health issues that, you know, some animals um, are trained to get their owners out of bed right in the morning. Digby knew that naturally. Uh, <laughs> she's perfect. She did. Um, you know, 6 a.m. every day. Yeah, I got one of those alarm clocks it's myself. Okay. Um, but what we find is in hospital settings or in schools or in prisons or trauma center, I mean, the, the list is pretty much anywhere, um, that they, they, they give smiles and humor. They're unconditional in their positive regard. They give an opportunity for safe touch. Mm -hmm. I think people in hospitals, oftentimes the only contact they really have is in a medical, very clean cut sort of yeah. uh, manner. So to be able to have an animal sleep with them or to cuddle or you know have a hug, it just, it, it goes a long way in boosting morale and feeling connected. It's funny, my roommate and I, I have three, four, five sometimes dogs at a time, but three all the time. Um, and I do a lot of rescue, that's why. And um, we call it dog weight. Like we say it jokingly, but when you have a dog kind of on you, just that warmth and that, that cuddling feeling, like, yeah. but it's, in all seriousness, it does something to your brain. It just makes you happier or more at ease. It does, you know, it does. There's some research that shows that petting animals um, has it's calming mm -hmm. um, you know being around dogs and or other animals too it also has been shown to reduce depression and anxiety uh, it gives a sense it, you know it's, it's a friend yeah you know? and, and, it, and it kind of fulfills the paternal need whether you're a, a mom or a dad if you have a baby puppy or a kitty or <laughs> bird even it gives you something to be caring after something to look after someone that you have to worry about and think about when you go home yes. Yeah. The human-animal bond is fascinating to me because I think uh, we know that it's important. We see as children how, how much it gives you some grounding as you're growing up. Um, has there been any research that really explores uh, why that exists and how it exists? There certainly has been some, at least in terms of you know, how, I think from an aspect of how are animals domesticated and so forth. But, you know, in terms of how humans form these bonds, it's, we've had pets, I think, for, since humanity began, right? Um, there's, there's paintings in caves. And so I think it's just part of our, our make, our psychic, mm -hmm. psyche, um, our makeup that we are, we're just connected and attuned to uh, the animals and our surroundings. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that sometimes in therapy you probably get people who've lost animals too and that's uh, the grieving is pretty profound. Yes. Uh, I just saw an article that the loss of a dog can be more painful <laughs> than the, the loss of a human. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's an interesting um, perspective, you know, but I think that for people that are maybe lonely or don't have a big social network, our you know, our pets become our family and especially when relationships are hard or tricky or we don't have a lot of trust or we have a lot of pain that we've carried um, you know our dogs and our cats are very healing and they're with us 20 i mean they're with us more you know than 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 most and we're able to have that contact with them in a way that we don't have with people on a regular ha basis. Have any families, so you deal primarily with kids, um, have any families gone on to adopt or rescue an animal because they've seen how it's helped their kids in your office that you know of? You know, I always offer that as an incentive. <laughs> I tell kids, you know, and teens, I'm like, if we can do some of the things that you're here for, you know, we will, uh, you know, I'll work on your parents. <laughs> I love but, it. But, um, you know, in terms, it, it's, yeah, and, I, and I'm open with that about the family, too. So, yeah, you know, course. it's sort of, it's a joke. 
But at the same time, um, one, I did have a little girl that I had worked with that desperately wanted a dog, and she would ask to get to walk Digby and even want to clean up after her. Oh, and, oh it felt so important. But her mom had a fear of dogs, and so in coming in, actually her mom became, uh, got used to Digby, and did they did in fact. Um, oh, rescue a dog. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, Dr. Jen, thank you so much for having us here today. And Digby, thanks for sitting in here. And I hope you, uh, your prescription is keep on doing what we're doing. <laughs> Larissa, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you thank as well. You. We're going to take a quick break and we come back. we got more Animal Zone. Hi, I'm Jeffany Telson, the president and founder of Rescue Cats. We are truly a no-kill sanctuary. If something comes in and they are not adoptable, then they stay and we take care of them for their whole life. There is a saying out there of a lot of shelters claiming to be no kill, but what is not told to the regular person is the definition of, cult, of no kill. That means that they have to be eight weeks of age, social and healthy. If the animals do not meet that criteria, based on the definition, they can be euthanized and still the shelter can call themselves no kill. For example, little Jade here came from a little mommy from a high kill shelter that uh, was going to euthanize her along with her uh, baby still inside, so the mom was pregnant. I just can't see that happening, so we reached out to try and help. Um, I think that what happens with that definition not being made public is that it is a lack of transparency. Uh, people have the feeling that they can turn in a cat or turn in a dog to a quote no-kill shelter and that they are not going to be killed and that is absolutely not true. If a shelter does not have the resources, meaning the fosters or the money, say to take care of four-week-old kittens, then they can put them, put them down and still call them no-kill. No Rescue Cats is truly a no-kill sanctuary. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We from the get-go established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner. Because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the Pet Psychic, as we enter the Animal Zone. Today we're at the AB Ranch in Santa Paula, California with Tina and her pigs and Laura Stinchfield, the Pet Psychic. Now tell me about all these pigs, where they come from? These pigs came from the local animal services. That's Penny, Raj, and Bernadette. Uh -huh. They were all turned in because people could no longer keep them. Now what happens? They think these are like miniature pigs? Yes, they grew. They're That's not their... miniature anymore, huh? This is still very miniature. Really? Yes. That's got to be like, what, 50 pounds, no? Uh, I'm going to go 100, 110 pounds. Holy smokes. Yes. Wow. So most people think pigs get to be about 40 pounds, and that's it. And that's a myth. 
Oh, this so, is more of your normal size. So then people don't want to have that big a pig or they can't handle that big Correct. a pig. Correct. Because yes. when they're cute and little, yes. like everything, when yes. they're cute and little, no uh -huh. problem, right? Correct. But breeders may also lie and tell you that yes. they're going to stay small, right? Yes. They say 40 pounds would be a really good size to have a pig to be. So they tell you that's how big they're going to get. And that's not 40 pounds. <laughs> Now, pigs make great pets, though, if you have the space for them. If you have the space and the strength of fencing. Yeah, so most really of the problem ooh, serious fence. is they escape because they're bored, and they will go through most of your average fencing. So she, Bernadette, was found astray walking down the street because her family couldn't keep her contained. Wow. So how do you keep a pig entertained? Well, the food enrichment, like toys, and then multiple pigs. Because so, they, they, they're, they're very social animals, right? Yes, because one pig's a lonely pig. And people say they're, they're like dogs a bit. They're smarter than dogs. They're smarter, you guys yeah. are smarter than dogs. And we think dogs are pretty smart. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, well, let's have Laura tune into what the pig is Raj thinking. is saying? Yeah. And so Tina, Raj is the one that you said was on the, on the porch? Is that what you said? No, yeah. he was a turn in to animal services because oh. he got too big. So Raj, my hands a boy. So what do you think? What do you want to tell people about like pigs and your life before? He's like on the, the place couch. the place where you lived, they dragged you around a lot. They put a harness on you and they were pulling you around. Here you get so much love. You never knew this love before. My old home, they liked me. They got so mad at you that they even kicked you around. You know what I want to tell Tina? What? What do you want to tell Tina? Sometimes when I see her, I feel so much at peace. <laughs> it's like she's an angel to animals. Aww. It's so true. I agree. She rescues all these animals. And she also makes sure we have warm bedding. And you'd rather live outside because you get to see nature. Well, I feel like we're in pig heaven here, Tina. So thank you for having us. And Laura, always amazing to hear what you pick up for. Aww. Four-legged friends here. Yeah, you're cute too. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after these words. My grandfather taught me about the beauty of the rugs. Each one tells a story. A story about the person who wove it, the person who bought it, the person who inherits it, the person who treasures it. It's amazing how simply looking at an object can bring you back to a different place and time or remind you of someone you love. At Santa Barbara Design Center, we want to help you find a rug that will travel through time with your family for generations to come. Visit us at 410 Oliver Street and find your treasure today. Water, the essence of life, flowing from Mother Earth, gathering essential minerals trace elements and vitality as it journeys to the surface, collected fresh and pure from springs around the world, each one as unique as a fingerprint. The world's best bottled waters are waiting for you at bottledwaterweb.com. So we're here today with uh, Janelle and JJ. Yeah, this is JJ. And JJ's, how long has JJ been at the Santa Barbara Humane Society? Oh gosh, not very long. He's one of our new kids here. He's probably been with us about a week, maybe a week and a half. And how, how old is he? He is pretty young. I think he's um, estimated to be about three, maybe four years old. So yeah. He's a sweet boy. He is very, very sweet. He is very active. He loves to play and chase and find. <laughs> uh-huh. And he's so, so handsome. Yes. So now handsome. you're the cat expert here. How, how, many, <laughs> how, many, how many cats do you have at the Humane Society? Um, it's kind of varied. Um, we usually average anywhere between 10 cats at a time to 30-ish, depending on how many we get in and, you know, if there's a lot of cats during summertime, we usually pick up a lot more, mm -hmm. um, which is great. And then we'll, we'll bring them in from other shelters, too, and uh, 
when we're a little low because we've got the space. We want to help as many as we can. So. And do you also take care of kittens? We do, yes. So we're coming up on kitten season right now, so we'll probably be getting a lot. And w if you get a kitten without a mom, do you, then you bottle feed them, right? Uh, yes. So usually what that happens with us here, just because we don't have staff 24-7 here, so we usually reach out to our fosters. Mm -hmm. um, we have some amazing fosters out there, including some of our own staff members here foster. Um, so we definitely do what we can for the ones that um, that need that extra care, the, the ones that are under like six weeks old that need more bottle feeding and hand feeding. So um, we'll reach out to our fosters for that. Now, if you know cats, maybe you can help me try to understand this question. People have asked me, do cats have emotions? Absolutely. So cats have emotions. They're a little different than people's. Um, it's just more varied. They have, they have a wider range of emotions. They process emotions a little differently than we do. So, but they are very emotional creatures. Um, and their emotions tie into their immune system too, which is why it's so incredibly important that we, we keep them as low stress as possible. It's when they get in high stress situations that they tend to get sick. So we definitely work with them on that a lot. <laughs> I, I think if one goes back to Darwin, he uh, has an illustration in his book uh, about uh, cats. He, he, he wrote, a, 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 there was a picture of a, of a leg and a kitty rubbing up against the leg and he said this is a, a cat that's uh, showing some type of affection towards right. this person. Um, so we assume that cats actually like us. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, they reach out to us when they want attention and they want love too, just like, you know, people do. We, you know, sometimes we just want to be more cuddled and we want, you know, the, a hug from somebody and they're, that's, they let us know when they need that too, so. Now, if you have a, a cat and you start petting the cat and it starts kneading on you, yes. what does that mean? That is very happy. They're very content. They are, are pleased in that moment, so they're, they're very comfortable. Does that go back to like when it was a kitten nursing? It does. It does. It definitely ties to that. So it's um, they'll need on their mother when they're nursing, and it's a it's a comfort. So it's they're definitely relaxed and comfortable when they're doing that. Now, if you have a cat that's skittish, like like we have one cat who's skittish of more or less everybody except for his mom. Sure. How do you? How can you break down those barriers? The biggest, most important thing with cats is to do things on their terms. It's just a patience game. You really want to be very calm and quiet and relaxed around them. They pick up on our emotions incredibly. And it's you just want to be you know, gentle with them and sit down and just relax. They'll come to you when they're ready. They're going to go slowly. It's really just being patient. Yeah, they need to be the boss. <laughs> Janelle, thanks so much for coming on Animal oh, Zone. Anytime. Great anytime. to see you, and I love your kitties. Thanks so much for sharing them with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This has been quite a treat, especially for JJ. <laughs> All right. We'll be back after these words. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. Hi, I'm Carrie Burns, and I'm the Executive Director for the Santa Barbara Humane Society. And what we want you to know is that humane societies are local to each community. No one is associated with the National Humane Society. So when you donate or you adopt, know that everything that you touch is right there in your own backyard. We want you to donate, volunteer, and adopt. For more information, visit sbhumanesociety.org. some amazing animals and guests. You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine. 
town So glad you're my best friend Through thick and thin We'll see things through Canine of mine, so true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity When I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be your canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend